The deep passion California game wardens have for their jobs doesn't stop when they retire. When it comes to telling tales of California fish and game wardens, retired warden Terry Hodges is their poet laureate. I was a game warden for 30 years and, and absolutely loved it. I'd originally wanted to be a biologist, but I soon learned that game wardens had all the fun, so I became a game warden and never once regretted it. What you see around you here is a, it's a big Sacramento San Joaquin Delta, vast, expensive waterways and islands, and I worked here for several eventful years. Thrills and spills a minute in the Delta. Our main adversaries during those days were the gill netters, outlawed gill netters that had been doing it for for decades and their fathers before them and the grandfathers as well. They tended to be pretty powerful people. They made a lot of money gill netting. They didn't want to stop when the government made it illegal. So I spent many, many nights in the Delta chasing those guys around. I was one of the few wardens that used a canoe for that. I could uh, use a canoe to slip up on them at night. They wouldn't hear me coming. And it was an absolutely devastating tool to use against them. Made lots of good cases. What I always think about when I'm in these Delta waters I think a lot about Jack London, who a lot of people don't realize, but he was a game warden for a couple of years early in his writing career. He worked out of a sailboat, a fast little sloop called the Reindeer. And he worked for about two years and he wrote a book about his experiences called Tales of the Fish Patrol. Anyway, when I would work the Delta, particularly on long stakeouts and on dark nights, I would think of Jack London because he worked the very same waters. He worked the same places where I was working, chasing the, the grandfathers and great-grandfathers as the outlaws I was chasing. And I would also think of the wardens that were killed working these Delta waters, doing the same thing I'm doing. There were four of them that were killed. One was beaten to death, and two others were shot with rifles and left adrift in their boat. And the fourth one was killed by a shotgun blast. The story that comes to mind that I will never forget was a night that I used a canoe, myself and another guy used a canoe to catch some really bad outlaws in a place called Grizzly Bay. Grizzly Bay is an expanse of water about five miles across and uh, another warden and I right at sunset started across Grizzly Bay in, the, in a canoe and uh, the wind came up on us in a hurry and it was a pretty vicious wind and I thought we're not going to make it just too dangerous a situation to survive but uh, we were going with the wind and there were big waves and and I was kind of surfing down the face of those waves and actually made it to shore we hardly even got wet as it turned out anyway when we finally saw him set the net, we saw him bring a big load of fish in, and we ultimately pounced on him and made the arrest. Um, it had been a long time since any of us had had any sleep, and I remember paddling that canoe back around the, the delta, almost falling asleep while I was paddling. Got back to my patrol rig, which was a sedan in those days, and I was so tired I didn't trust myself to drive. I just crawled into the back seat and was almost instantly asleep. And then I had this absolutely astounding dream. It was so real. Suddenly I was back on Grizzly Bay again in the middle of the night in a storm. And I was in a little sailboat called the Reindeer and Jack London was at the helm. And the dead wardens were there, all four of them. And I was with them. And we were sailing through the night uh, off to some adventure. Anyway, it's a dream that I will remember till the day I die.